Welcome to today's video. Don't worry, cold viruses aren't transmissible over the internet last time I checked. Now, I was going to skip today, but I was working on something that's of potentially overwhelming importance, so I want to bring it to you. Now, Denmark is home to 5.8 million people and 17 million mink. Now, what seems to have happened is that the virus, the SARS coronavirus 2 COVID-19 causing virus, has jumped from people into the mink and has been spreading in the mink. Now, these 17 million mink, as far as I can tell, aren't kept in particularly good conditions. They're all in very confined spaces. So, of course, the virus can spread readily. So if you'd like, there's been a zoonotic spillover event from humans into mink. The virus has spread in mink. Now, the, the receptors where the, virus go, where the spike protein of the virus goes into in mink is a slightly different shape to the ACE2 receptor in human. So that's human. So the virus has had to mutate a bit to fit into it. So there's been a mutation in this viral spike protein. So the SARS coronavirus 2 viral spike protein has mutated apparently in mink in Denmark. Now, so far, uh, the prime minister in Denmark has reported that 12 people have caught the coronavirus, this new mutated coronavirus from mink, and 12 people have caught that, that they know of. The question is, is there community transmission of this new mutated virus going on in Denmark at the moment? Now, back in January, February on this channel, we called for stopping all flights out of China, but the World Health Organization let it carry on. Um, now, we're in a very similar situation potentially here. Now, just a quick check. Um, this morning from Copenhagen, you could fly to Alicante, Spain, Newark, USA, Milan, Spain, uh, Vilnius, Lithuania, Gdansk, Poland, uh, Trondheim, Norway, London, UK, Faroe Isles, Reykjavik in Finland, Oslo. This afternoon you can fly to Dubai, Cairo, Turkey, France, Germany, Chicago, Doha. I don't think I need to go on. Basically, they're just flying out of there as if everything's, nothing's ever happened. There seems to be international flights going on all the time. Now, if this is a new mutated form of the virus, as appears to be the case, and I'm going to give evidence for this, then that may mean that people who've had SARS coronavirus 2 already are not going to be very immune to this new form of virus. It may even mean that the vaccine is not, um, will not work against this new sort of virus. Now, I don't want to be alarmist here. I don't think this is the case, but there is a risk of this. And so far, based on this risk, nothing seems to have been done. And I've just got this awful feeling of deja vu that I had back in January. Now, I really hope I'm wrong, but we absolutely need to close the Danish borders. And all those countries I've just read out, everyone coming from Denmark to all those countries, they have to go into 14 days isolation, quarantine, and that needs to be supervised. Because we know if it's not supervised from the UK and from the Australia experience, people just nip out. We had the Scottish chief medical officer just nipping to a second home. We had a professor of uh, epidemiologist just nipping out to see a, a friend. We, we, we've all had all sorts of breaches in protocol like this. The, the hotels in Victoria, of course, where people escaped. And that's, that's what caused the Victoria Australia outbreak. These people need to be supervised for 14 days because I think this is a real, a real risk now, here's the information on it. Um, so far, it's only in the popular news outlets. Now, just to be clear, we have no firm science on this yet. There's nothing published. What we're going on is what politicians and other scientists are saying about it. But let, 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 let's go through this so it's not just me being, me being silly. So Denmark are culling all their mink, which, is, of course, is appalling. Now, why on earth we need mink in the first place these days in the, in the era of fabric? I have no idea. Um, but um, they're the culling all mink. Uh, apparently on 207 farms, uh, they're culling all the mink, affected mink. There's a thousand farms overall. I think the plan is to kill all 17 million mil mink on a thousand farms because there's a mutated form of the coronavirus that's gone from humans to mink. It's been accurately reported that there's been transmission to 12 humans so far that we know about. Now, is this virus so different from the pre previous viruses that people won't be immune to it? Probably not, but don't know. Is this virus so different that the vaccines won't work? Probably not, but we don't know. 
I don't know, maybe a few scientists in Denmark know, but we don't know yet. Is this virus more transmissible than other forms of SARS coronavirus too? Don't know. Is this more pathogenic? Will it cause more severe disease? Don't know. But until we figure out what the heck is going on, we need to be cautious. And at the moment, we are not being. Um, let's carry on. Virus may therefore be in the local human population. Unfortunately, that could well be the case. Prime Minister of uh, Denmark um, says this. Uh, mutated virus posed, and this is a direct quote, risk to the effectiveness of future vaccines. So the Prime Minister is concerned. I think we can assume that the Prime Minister of Denmark is well informed by his scientists and he has publicly issued this concern. Still fly out in and out of Copenhagen all you want, but you yeah. <clears throat> Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, US have all had mink infection as well. Uh, the UK response, Grant Shapps, Transport Secretary, announces travellers arriving after 4pm today must self-isolate for 14 days. But let me tell you, some of them won't. It's that simple. Some of them won't. This needs to be supervised as it was in Victoria once they got their act together. More things that have concerned me on this. Vaccine expert, director of infectious diseases, Serum State Institute of Denmark. This is where they do all their sort of blood and vaccine stuff. Right, he says, Kari, possibly she, my apologies, man, <laughs> uh, whichever. Um, worst case scenario is that we would start off a new pandemic in Denmark. Worst case scenario. Okay, probably unlikely to happen. But why, oh, why, oh, why are we taking the risk? A new pandemic. You know, is this going to be a new Hubei Wuhan? Are we going to be talking about the Denmark virus? Uh, there's a risk that this mutated virus is so different from others that we'd have to put new things in a vaccine. In other words, the vaccine probably wouldn't work. And therefore, the mutation would slam us slam all in the whole world back to the start we don't want that we'll put us back to square one we'll put us back to january we don't want that so here we have a vaccine expert director of infectious diseases saying there's a real risk and uh, here we have um, grant shaft saying um, oh or please would you mind self-isolating for 14 days if you come back now, that list of all the countries we said there, suppose all the countries took perfect quarantine measures apart from, say, Germany. Then the virus could get out in Germany and spread around the world from there. We are as weak as the weakest link. And this, this just needs to be done now. And it, if it turns out I'm wrong and if it turns out Professor is wrong, then OK, but what have we lost? You know, D Denmark, a country of uh, 5.8 million people, has been slight, slightly inconvenienced for a short period of time. I mean, wow. Dutch virologist and zoonosis expert. More research is needed, obviously. But anyway, it seems the mink variant mutation is found in the spike protein of the SARS coronavirus 2, exactly where we don't like it to be, because that's the bit that makes this virus infectious. It's the spike protein of the SARS coronavirus 2 that binds into cells to cause infection. And it seems that the virus is mutated in mink. Now, this is very basic, very, very basic Darwinian evolutionary theory. What happens is there's um, billions of these viruses and most of them don't have uh, any effect on, on the mink uh, ACE2 receptor. The spike protein doesn't doesn't react with them particularly well. But then there's one virus that happens to mutate and the spike protein just happens, one, one, one of billions of viruses, trillions of viruses, one of the spike protein just happens to mutate to fit in very nicely, thank you. Then that is the virus that's able to reproduce. 
So in, in, in evolutionary terms, this virus is selected for. This is natural selection. So that virus reproduces. So the virus that fits into the spike protein in the most effective way is the one that reproduces effectively through the mink. And it may well be that that spike protein is not recognized by the vaccines that they're developing or, 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 or by the human immune system. We, we don't know yet, but that's possible. But these virologists are concerned. Um, um, maybe, uh, but, but we don't know. And that is a direct quote if you don't know you know if, you, if, if, you, if you're driving around a bend and you don't know if there's a truck coming in the other direction what do you do do you say i tell you what i'm driving around this bend it could be there's a 50 ton semi or in this country we call them articulated lorries coming in the other direction now if i crash into that lorry i'll be smashed into a pulpy tomato um, if there's a lorry coming. But I tell you what, I'm going to assume there's not a lorry coming and I'm going to go around that corner at great speed. I'll probably be all right. I don't know, so I'm going to take the risk. This is the attitude, this is the approach that the world is taking at the moment. And quite frankly, it beggars credulity. Why? You know, why would you drive? Why not, why not just drive slowly until you can see what's around the corner? Till the headlights of science illuminate the view ahead. And we can see clearly. Um, now, the other possibility is uh, uh, weasels, badgers, otters, ferrets, other, other animals are very similar to uh, mink. And the other possibility here is the virus could get into these species. And that could act as, as, a, as a natural zoonotic reservoir that could potentially reinfect humans and cause future pandemics in the future. <clears throat> so that is possible. Right, one, one more expert, Professor Ian Jones, virologist at the University of Reading. Um, the idea that the virus mutates in a new species is not surprising, as we've just said, it's simple Darwinian evolution, as it must adapt to be able to use mink receptors to enter the cells and so will modify the spike protein to enable this to happen efficiently. Okay. In other words, the, the mutated virus will be selected for. Uh, the danger is that the mutated virus then comes back into humans, he said man, the old-fashioned term, um, and, and evade any vaccine response which would have been designed to the original non-mutated version of the spike protein. Let, let me put it quite starkly here. I think the risk is small, but there is a risk of a renewed pandemic, so we need to close the Danish borders. But as of now, you can fly wherever you want. Turn up at Copenhagen Airport with a few dollars in your pocket. Go to Doha, no problem. Now, why do I, why am I saying this? Well, we could talk about uh, we could talk about uh, different states in Australia, but let's talk about Western Australia. They close the borders legally. Close the borders, stop people going in and out, and they've had no uh, infections for six months. Basically, everything in Western Australia is normal because they close the borders. And likewise, when they close the borders in uh, Victoria, that, that, uh, they've got on top of that now as well. Um, now, it's a pity they didn't close the borders in Hubei. They did, but it was too late. And of course, we were advising they close the borders in China, wherever it is. But of course, they didn't. The World Health Organization still uh, fly in, fly out, no problem. No problem, they said. Keep flying. In February, they said that. But Taiwan has closed it off. Very strict quarantine. And they, in Taiwan, have had no cases for, I can't remember now, it's about 208 days now, I think, with no community spread because they closed off the borders. We know this works. I can tell you from this morning's airline schedules, in Denmark, it is not yet happening. And I assume ships are going back and forward as well. So what we need to do is close off the borders to Denmark like that until we find out what the heck is going on. So I think that's all I wanted to say today. Hope it made sense. I've got a bit of a cold today. I'm sure you won't get it. Um, okay, so uh, <clears throat> um, thank you for watching today's video. Um, I maybe look worse than I feel, don't worry. My brain seems to be working. Um, well, as well as it ever does. Um, anyway, um, so that's a major concern. Um, write to your politicians uh, and tell them to uh, guarantee uh, 
uh, enforced quarantine for people flying out of Denmark just for two weeks. Close the borders, let's get the borders closed to Denmark until we work out what's going on. And if a couple of weeks' time the virologists say, hey, you know what? Bit of a bit of a storm in a teacup. Then then what have we lost? You know, 6.3 million people in Denmark inconvenienced or another potential pandemic. I don't want to be alarmist, but this is this is just this just illustrates. I mean, I've drawn these maps here in a way that, that you know, hopefully any politician can understand that. You know, this is not hard to understand. I made it simple for you, politicians. Just all you've got to do is is, is do it. I think you've got the point. Okay, thank you for watching as always.